The government of Canada is utterly laughably corrupt and it's corrupt right in people's faces. Everybody is leaving Canada and is sick and tired of what is going on. And in this video, I'm going to explain to you what is going on. In Canada right now, we have major problems. One of the big problems is the fact the economy is absolutely tanking right now. There are major problems in the economy and there is also a housing crisis that is going on. So the housing crisis is a big thing that people are not addressing. And the housing crisis is the main reason, in fact, that people are leaving but the other reason that people are leaving is the economy and a lot of people that are outside of this country that may watch this video who are considering moving to Canada don't understand how dependent the Canadian economy is on the housing market and the housing market is in a housing bubble and we've had this housing bubble for a long time in Canada and essentially in 2023 it has been bursting the housing bubble has been bursting in Canada and this has massive economic consequences consequences for the country. A country that depends so much on housing for small businesses, for growth, is going to have problems when the housing market bubble finally ends. And eventually it ends. And in my opinion, it's a good thing that it's ended. It's going to mean economic chaos for Canada for the next couple of years, maybe. But eventually there will be a recovery in Canada. Wow. Right now, I would be lying if I told you it was a great idea to move to Canada. I think it is a ridiculous idea to move to Canada right now. But it's not just Canada that I think it's a ridiculous idea to move to. To move now anywhere, to leave a stable job is just a stupid idea. We are heading into a global recession. There are major problems. So to just leave your country, if you have any form of stability, is completely ridiculous in my opinion. But anyway, I want to talk about the core reasons why people are leaving. One of the reasons I'm leaving is because the government in Canada has become very authoritarian. A lot of people don't talk about this, but the government of Canada has become scarily authoritarian. And the thing is, they are passing censorship laws right now to essentially stop people from communicating what they want to communicate online. They want to control the media. They want to be able to control everything. Thing. This is central planning. It's Orwellian type stuff. But this is literally happening in Canada. So the Canadian government is clamping down on free speech and the virtue signaling government has also just been absolutely terrible. But the turning point for me was really actually in 2022. It was in February of 2022. You may have heard of the trucker convoy in Canada. And most people have kind of forgot about the trucker convoy and what happened. But essentially, the trucker convoy was a movement and it was a movement for freedom of speech. People were sick and tired of all the mandates and the government trying to control everything back in 2022. I mean, Canada had some of the most authoritarian measures in place throughout the pandemic. And this was in response to that. So what happened to that? It was demonized by the government and the government rushed in to actually shut down and quash that protest. They actually sent armed military like police into the city of Ottawa to stop this protest. And that really shocked me. And that was a turning point for me where I realized that Canada was no longer a democracy. Canada isn't the democracy that is advertised online. A lot of the information that you get fed online about Canada is either old or it's complete bollocks. Because the thing is, in Canada right now, there is a massive problem and nobody is really talking about it. Not much is being done about it. And they are literally trying to quash free speech. And just to give you an example, we actually had an example of a protest in Panama. And guess what? That protest was not squashed by the government of Panama and it was allowed to continue. And eventually the protesters even got got what they want because it was the majority of what the country wanted. It was over a copper mine and a contract over a copper mine. And funnily enough, 
it was a Canadian company, but I don't want to get into the nuance of that. I want to talk about what happened with the protest. And the thing is, people did exactly the same things as we saw in Canada in 2022 in Panama. It inconvenienced a lot of expats. It inconvenienced a lot of people. A lot of people were unable to work. There was supply shortages, but people understood the cause. And the Panamanian people stood united behind that protest. And the reason why it was overturned wasn't because the Supreme Court in Panama suddenly realized that, hey, this contract is unconstitutional. It was because that was what the vast majority of people wanted in Panama. And Panama, even though it's not a great democracy, is a better functioning democracy than even Canada is. And it's funny because, you know, Panama, when this was going on, I was thinking about it deeply and I had a lot of reflection and I was thinking, you know what, actually, this kind of proves to me that Panama is a place that I want to go to and I want to live because it shows that people do have freedom of speech. They do have freedom of expression. They have more freedom of speech and expression than people in Canada because, yes, they were questioning corruption in the government and government corruption is not just isolated to Panama. The government of Canada is utterly laughably corrupt and it's corrupt right in people's faces. But the difference is in Canada, when there is a protest about that, the government sends armed police in to stop that protest, to break apart that protest, arrests a lot of people who were heavily involved in that protest, demonizes those people and tries to make a point out of using those people to say, this is what happens to you if you go against the government narrative, if you go against us, if you question us. Because we are a democracy and we are so, so good in Canada. There is nothing bad that we do. We get everything right here. And it is just so stupid, guys. And you know, I've spoken to so many expats on traveling in Costa Rica, here in Mexico, and also in Panama. And they all say the same thing. They all share the same views on Canada and where it's going and they just think it has changed so much over the past decade and people don't realize this this is not the Canada of 2019 this is a totally different place if you want to become a debt slave if you want to work until you have a heart attack and eat shitty food then come to Canada because you're gonna have a great time but if you want to be an entrepreneur if you want to make something of yourself if you want to start a small business then don't come to Canada because you are going to have a terrible time. And if you value free speech at all and you have the wrong views that the government doesn't like, then be prepared to be shut down in Canada because that's exactly the type of laws that they are trying to pass right now as we speak in Canada. It's part of the reason why on my other channel I promote VPN so much. It's because you literally need a VPN in Canada because it's got that Orwellian. I mean, literally, you won't see a lot of the news in Canada unless you're on a VPN anymore because of government laws like Bill C-16 or Bill C-18. So you won't see all the news. The reality is it's pretty simple in my opinion. I hear the same thing constantly and it's the reason I'm leaving too. Although the fundamental reason for me is the lack of free speech. I think that is an absolute disaster and I think that is heading down a slippery slope. But but the secondary thing is the cost of living. The cost of living is absolutely astronomical. And whether you buy or rent, you're gonna be completely fucked. Whether you move to Calgary or you move to Vancouver, you're gonna be completely fucked regardless. And you're gonna be depressed because the weather is absolutely shit in Calgary for eight months, then you have three months of smoke. And in Vancouver, you have six months of miserable, cloudy, shitty, rainy weather. So for anybody who is an entrepreneur, where should you look at going? Maybe you should look at going to the United Arab Emirates. Maybe you should look at going to Malaysia. Maybe you should look at going to Singapore. I mean, Singapore is rivaling Canada for the cost of living, but it has none of the taxes that Canada has. So you'll be far better off moving to a place like Singapore and you may be able to make it better for yourself depending on what you want to do. And if you want to start a traditional business, then I would advise you go to the United States. I would advise that you put in the effort and go to the United States 
United States. Now, the United States is not a great place in my opinion. I think they're on a slippery slope too, but I think people in the US are far more likely to stand up for their freedom and liberty, whereas Canada, they're just happy to be steamrolled and the immigration policy that the government is pursuing is basically just trying to numb society to whatever the government wants. So that's the reality of what's going on in Canada. If you enjoyed this video, you might like this video here. You might like this playlist here. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and supporting this channel. I know it's been a long time for this video. If you want to help support me further, go to Patreon. Link is in the description. Again, just thank you for being here and I will see you in the next one.